Okay. All right, let's talk about our graphs, okay? The things you need to be able to do, all right? You need to be able to draw me, I would like you all to do this really fast, draw me a constant, well let me ask this, what does, what does this graph mean? What does this graph mean? Oh, this is, this is my distance versus time. What does this mean about my motion? That I'm not moving. It's a constant velocity of zero, okay, but... But more importantly, it means that we're not moving. Why are we not moving, Anika? Why are we we're not moving? Give me some more specifics, more than that. Parallel doesn't mean any, in this specific graph, why does it mean that we're not moving? Okay, I am at the same distance or position. I'm at the same position on a distance versus time. I'm at the same position as time moves on. I'm at five meters, say, as time moves on. Do you guys see that? That means I'm not moving, okay? What about this graph? What does this mean? I have constant velocity, yeah. Okay, why do, you, why do I have constant velocity? Okay, let's get a little more specific too. Let's talk about the term slope. What is, this, what is, what is the slope of this graph? It's positive. Hmm? It's linear, but, it's, but the slope is, how do I determine my slope? So what is the equation for the slope of this of this line? Change change of whatever change of what? Change in distance over change in time. Right. So my slope is my change in distance over my change in time. So change in distance over my change in time is equal to what thing? Velocity. Velocity. You guys should be able to do that. Okay? If I were to give you, if I were to give you some points, and I said this is like three seconds, and that's five seconds. Okay, and that's, you know, six meters, and that's eight meters. You should be able to tell me what the velocity is. How would you determine the velocity of this? If I told you... It's eight and, eight and six, excuse me. That's... So eight meters and five meters. Let's let's lay, let's lay it out. Show me the work. How would you do that? How do I determine the velocity or the slope of a line? Given this information. Eight minus five. Okay. Huh? Okay. Well, let's do it. I want to make sure we do it. Listen. Listen. Uh, you say what? Okay, but it is easy to do. But I just want to make sure people. Uh, this is going to trip people up. But I want to make sure we can do this, right? What's Let's look at this. It's the change in distance over change in time. Let's, what is that? How do I break that down? No, no, give me, give me variables first. So my distance final minus my distance initial over what? My time final minus my time initial. Okay. What determines final and initial? What determines what's final and initial? Because this. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. Okay, but what determines where I start and what I end? Time. time. I want to be very clear about this. The later time is always my final position or final time. My earlier time is always my beginning or my initial time, right? The later time is my final time. The earlier time is always the initial time because time always moves forward. So in this case, my final time, what's my final time? Five what? What's my initial time? So it's five seconds minus three seconds. At five seconds, what is my distance? 
Okay, you see how we now determine what my final distance is. Minus my initial distance, which is what? Five meters. So that means I have how many meters over how many seconds? Three meters over two seconds. Okay, so that's three halves or meters per second. I have a quick question for you. So um, you will have to draw the grass and the you, will, you may have to draw a graph, you may have to read a graph, you may have to do all, all those kinds of things, okay? Does that make sense? Clear? Okay. If my distance versus time graph was this way, okay? All right, and let's say it was, oops. Okay, and let's say this was two seconds and five seconds, and this was two meters and three meters. Okay? Now, what's my velocity? How do I do it? Let's break it out. Don't just, don't just jump into it. Make sure you do the, uh, the steps. What's my step? Three minus two. Well, let's, 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 look at time. let's do the time first. What's my time final? Five seconds minus two seconds. Remember, the reason I do the time first is because the time is determining what's final, right? What's my distance final? What's my distance final? Two. Do you guys see that? The distance final, the, the position I'm at, at five seconds. So it's two meters minus what? Three meters. So now when I do this, what do I get? How many meters? Ah, negative what? Negative one meter over three seconds. So it's negative one third meters per second. And it makes sense, I'm going backwards. I'm decreasing in my distance. So if you do this, as we've talked about before, you will never me mess up your, your orientation. Okay, always look for your final position, all right, or your final time, so you can, always look for your final time, so you can look for your final position or final velocity, so, make sense? Okay, oops, okay, now, let's do this. What does this mean? What does this mean? What kind of motion do I have? Constant velocity. So what does that mean? Give me layman's terms. What does that mean? Not accelerating. What else? How else? You're at the same speed, right? Your speed is always the same. If I'm driving a car, I'm in cruise control. Everyone know about cruise control in your car? It's a wonderful thing. All right. Okay, let me ask you a question. If I'm going 50 miles an hour, for an hour, how far have I gone? 50 miles. That's a very simple thing you can do, right? From the, but let's say I'm going 5 meters a second, and let's say we did that for 15 seconds. How far would I have gone? 75 meters. Hmm? 75 meters. In 15 seconds. Good Lord. Okay, so again, my velocity is five meters per second, okay? And if I multiply it by 15 seconds over one, I'm getting my meters, right? So that's uh, 75 meters, right? The other issue is this, here we go. How else could I solve that? Uh, how else could I solve that graphically? Where does the distance, where's that change in distance? Where's it represented in my graph? Where's the change of distance represented in my graph? The area in seconds. More specific. The area. the area under the line. So it's the area under this curve, right? It's my the the excuse me the change in distance. Okay, sorry. The change in distance is equal to my velocity times my delta t, right? 
because velocity is equal to delta d over delta t. And I can reorient that so that my delta distance is equal to velocity times delta time, right? Well, here's my, the change in distance is my velocity, which is this guy, my velocity. And here's my delta t. It's the area of the curve, right? The area of a rectangle. Ever, everyone remember this? I don't want to belabor the point, but I, I don't hear any responses, so I want to make sure that you guys get this. This will be on the test. Any questions on this? Okay. Let me, let me, then let me, let me ramp it up. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. What does this mean? Constant acceleration. How do you know that? Because it's always going in its slightly up. Okay, give me some more mathematical specifics. The slope is constant. The slope is constant. Okay, okay that, that's okay. So make sure the slope is constant. The slope which is the rate of change, the rate of incline. What is my slope for this line in variables? What's my slope for this line? The Oops, it, yeah, it's delta V over delta T, okay? Again, I could give you these points, and I could say at 10 seconds and 12 seconds, my initial velocity of 5 meters a second, and my, my next um, velocity is 12 meters a second, okay? How would you, can you determine my, and what is this delta V over delta T equal, by the way? Acceleration. It's called acceleration. The slope of a V versus T graph is acceleration, right? On the bottom, does it say 10 and 12 seconds? 10 and 12. It could be anything, okay. right? But my point is, forget the numbers, right? How do I, how would I graphic, how would I mathematically determine my acceleration from this graph? Okay. 12 seconds, oh, so excuse me, I'm sorry, 12 what now? 12, we well, gotta use units, kiddo. What? Meters, per meters per second minus five. five meters per second over 12 seconds minus. How did you know that 12 meters a second was your final velocity? Hmm? It's the one that is assigned to the later time. Okay? So that means I've got. 7 meters per second over 2 seconds. That means I'm acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared. Everyone see that? You guys can do that? Yeah. Oh, Keaton, you good? Mm -hmm. All right. I, listen, there, there, you know, I've, last year there, this, was, this was something that we thought we could do, I got on the test, people weren't able to do it. So let's make sure we can do this stuff, all right? So think about this, go home tonight, practice this, put some numbers in, okay? All right. Um, same thing applies if my, if my line was negative like that, right? Does that make sense? Now my 10 second is here and my 12 second is there, all right? And so my, I actually am going what does this mean? Am I, for, for let's, let's say this is, let's say this is, you know, curve one and this is curve two. What's happening with, what's the difference between curve one and curve two? One, on, one you're slowing down and one you're doing what? Speeding up. So positive and negative. You're right. Which one am I slowing down with? Two, right? Because I'm negatively accelerating. Or I'm, excuse me, I'm, yeah, negatively accelerated, so I'm slowing down. Does that make sense? Okay, good, good. Okay, all right. Now we'll do one more, really, really pick up the pace. Velocity versus time, okay. Okay. What's going on here? Talk to me about what's happening here. I'm constant what? Okay, and then I'm accelerating, 
right? So if I'm thinking about like a car, what would be the idea for the car? What would, what would be an example of what's going on with the Hmm? On this one? Or you have it on cruise control and you decide to accelerate. Okay. It, yeah. What's my velocity at this point? Okay, this is, this is where the trip up's gonna happen, right? I, don't confuse V for, for, T, for T, okay? This is horizontal at the beginning, but that means I have a constant velocity. And because that velocity is not at the zero line, I have some sort of speed, right? And then at a certain point, then I increase my speed. Now I do what? Accelerate. Does everyone get that? Okay. What is the total distance that I travel? How do I re how can I graphically represent the total distance that I travel? You need to know your velocity. Graphically. Okay, so which part of the curve am I am I going to color in for the for the distance? Okay, let's see here. Let's see. Let's let's say. Okay. So many emails. Okay, so let's say this is my my this is my time, right? Okay, where is my total distance that I cover? Okay, just just right here. Okay. Let me do this. Okay, here it is. So you're talking about like this. Okay, let's be clear about that. The total distance I cover is the whole thing. Now. I could break it up. I could say, hey, how much distance, draw me, the, draw me a graph, or draw, draw me the space that covers only the distance that I covered while I was in cruise control. Where would that be? The little box is straight. There we go. Okay, this area here is cruise control central. The distance I change for, distance I cover for cruise control. Correct? Do you guys see that? What's the distance I cover Purely for the acceleration portion. Just the acceleration portion. It's this triangle up here. That's just purely the acceleration portion. But how much total distance do I cover while I accelerate from that initial velocity? Well, that's all of this. Okay. Just the acceleration portion. The amount of distance I cover just for the acceleration because if I look at this, velocity versus time, right, and I were to accelerate from a standstill, my area for the acceleration portion is just that area. That's where you start accelerating. Right? Yeah, that's where you start accelerating. Okay. So a portion of the distance I cover for the acceleration portion is just this acceleration part. But but the total distance I cover, the total distance I would actually really cover is, to your point, all of this. Because I would have gone this smaller distance anyway. So that's this. Wait, so how would you like that? Like, how would you ask that? So the, like, the little gold triangle is just the acceleration. Just the acceleration. And the part below it is this. Well, all of the, everything below the curve is, is your acceleration the distance you cover when you accelerate from your initial velocity. Does that make sense? Because again, it's that choose your own adventure. If I didn't accelerate, I would have just covered this rectangle down below. But because I chose to accelerate, I'm going to cover that anyway, and I'm going to cover more. Do you guys see that? You should be able to identify those kinds of things. Cool? Cool beans? Drew, you good? Okay. Important stuff. Important stuff. Um, okay. Uh, la, 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 la. What else do you want to know? What do you want? What do you want to work on? It's uh, it's jumping jacks. Yep, it's all about jumping jacks. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys. I'm probably give you guys a, a few. Um, a few multiple choice, and they give you um, uh, different.
just I may ask you to graph something or draw something, and I'll have you do a problem or two. Okay, that's it. Nothing big. And maybe more like the graph stuff. Like, here's a graph. You know, here's a list of descriptions of motion. Which one associates with which? Right? Okay. Hmm? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sure you look at make sure you look at that that image I showed you that that graph set up. Okay. I will not ask you where the. Okay. Well, let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. If I have my velocity versus time graph, and let's say I have. Um, what am I doing here? What kind of motion do I have? Beautiful. What kind of acceleration? Constant. Okay. The area, the, the change in distance that I cover in my velocity is what? Where is it graphically? The change in distance from this yeah, under the change in distance from this acceleration is all the area under the curve. Do we remember what that what that distance is calculated as? Remember how we calculate the distance for that? So half times a times squared, right? Where a is the slope of that line, right? And its distance is one half a delta t squared. And in this case, you wouldn't have the extra. Like, mm -hmm. You wouldn't have the initial or the. Right, because in this case, I don't have any. Okay. Right, and but if it was if it was to, to to Rachel's point, okay. Then I have this other box under here. Here's my initial velocity. That's gonna be plus v initial times delta t, right? That here is my v initial times delta t, right? That's my that's my delta distance for that area, right? So I really have two different delta distances. I have the acceleration delta distance and the constant velocity delta distance. Cool, good. I won't ask you to to, to derive that, but you should know what it is. You should know where where to use it. Okay. The if I look at acceleration and time. I have constant acceleration. We'll always just have constant acceleration. We won't change. It will never be non-constant acceleration. Okay. So I've got that. The area under this curve. The area under the curve is is what? No, not for acceleration. It's velocity. It's my change in velocity. Okay. It's my change in velocity. Because remember, acceleration is delta v over delta t over delta t, right? And the area of the curve is a times delta t. Well, a times delta t equals my delta v, right? I'm just rearranging that equation so I can see that. All right, this, this is the area of the rectangle, right? You guys see that? Are we clear? Can you do this by yourselves? Yes. Can I trust you to do this by yourselves? Yes. Okay. All right. So these are the basic things you should know. You should know what the area under each curve is. Acceleration versus time is my change in velocity. Let me, let me state that again. The distance, the, the, the area under the curve of an acceleration versus time graph is my change in velocity. The area under a velocity versus velocity versus time graph is distance, a change in distance. Right? Okay. The area under the curve of an acceleration versus time graph is my change in velocity. The area under a velocity versus time curve is my change in distance. Guys, do well on this test, please. Do well on this test. Okay. I'm, go I'm going to, you're like, uh, Mr. A, hey, it's not up to us. Uh, I'm going to make sure that you have every opportunity to do well in this test. 
Okay? You should all get a 100 on this test. And I'll let you know right now. Okay? Okay. Um, you want to do, let's, do, let's do some more problems. Yub, yub? Yes, you, all, you always get a note card. Listen, listen. I give you the note card for two reasons. One, I don't want you to memorize anything. Google is out there. You can always get access to this stuff. Back when I was in school, you had to know it. But even then, we got note cards. Because it's, you always have to have reference. You need to know how to use this. The, re the second reason I give you the note card is because it's a, it's a beautiful way to study. You spend time studying and writing up your note card, you're going to be studying for that test. By the end of the day, if you've done your note card correctly and you study correctly, you'll have a note card. And when you're at the test, you don't even need to use it. Right? That's, that's the idea. That's why I do it. Yes, ma'am. Fully functioning. End of the semester. Wait, what is the prototype? Oh no 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 no. Let's be the conceptual prototypes. All conceptual prototypes don't have to work. Just conceptual. Okay. I don't think it has that tone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no time for that. Uh, <laughs> Semi-functioning meaning that you have, at this point in the game, certain things, and you've gotten to this point, where certain things you feel like they have to, you may have to test the function, right? You may feel like, I may have to figure out um, what, I may have to make sure that this thing is going to work. Does the whole thing work? No, but maybe a piece of it. I need to test that out. So you need to start to think about what portions you want to prove out and do those pieces. It's not a requirement, but there are certain things at this point you, you might need to try out before you go to the end. It's like, it's like you're going to have this ginormous thing, okay? You're going to have this ginormous, let me, let me turn my outlook off, okay? You're going to have this, this ginormous set of things that have to happen, five things that have to happen. Rather than trying to make them all happen at once, you can make one thing happen at a time. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get, you, it's just, you got to move the ball down the field. At this point in the game for projects, you got to think about the end, and we'll talk about this on Thursday, okay? At this point in the project, at the, you have to think about the, the, end, the end goal. When is it due? What, what do you think, what you should, at this point, have a good idea of basically what you're doing after the interviews, and we'll talk about this on Thursday. And then um, you will... Um, you'll have to figure out your plan. What do you need to do to go from each step? Okay. So we're going to, I know it's been a lot, it's a really, it's been a really funky few weeks or because of spring break, the weather and my medical issues. We're going to go through and spend some time this week. What I think I'll do is I'll push the deliverable off till Friday for you guys so we can spend Thursday working on it. Okay. Yes, sir. Do we have a today? I don't know. I think you might. Yay. What did you have to do do for advisory? Oh, what well, you we were gonna work today? Yeah. Well, why don't you ask permission to get out of advisory? Come do your work. Oh, Everyone well, ask permission. Do I can't See, there you go. Every I don't have advisory, so okay. I was so looking forward to having you guys for advisory next year too. I did, it was just it's just I've got so much going on. I just there's just no possible way. There's no I don't even do a sport. But. But I was, I was really looking forward to having you guys do uh, be part of my advisory. Okay. Okay. Um, I can do tele-advisory. We can telephone and be like, hey, what's up? Have a donut for me. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of advisory. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about, um, this is a good example. This will be a good example. Are you ready for the great example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. Oh, okay. What was the question for yesterday we didn't finish? 
The bomb one? Oh, the Superman thing. The Superman horizontal? Okay, let's do that. Oh, I give you initial velocity, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 do it. Let's let's do let's do one similar to that. Okay. Let's do a different one similar to that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix them together. I'm gonna mix it together. I'm gonna do a new problem that's gonna actually do both together. Well, do you want me? Do you want me? What, what do, you, do you want me to finish? What do we? Where, how far did we get on the bomb question yesterday? We did everything but the part with the initial velocity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so let's do the initial velocity with this one, okay? We'll do the initial velocity with this guy. Okay, so I've got my missile. I've got a little rocket here. Okay. Okay, little guy in here, right? Okay. All right, he's flying along, okay? Huh? Oh, it's got a lot of fuel. It's got a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel. Can get everywhere it's going to go. All right. Now, here's the thing. Let's assume, okay, let's assume it has an initial velocity, velocity of the rocket, initially. Wait, let me, let me rewrite. I'm, I'm so sorry I, draw, I write so small. Velocity of the rocket initially equals 100 meters per second. Okay. Then, let's assume that it's going to travel some distance. OK? And at the, but it's always accelerating. It's constantly accelerating because it's got this rocket. So there's some sort of constant acceleration. I'm going to ask you what that is. Let's say the velocity of the rocket final is 5,000 meters per second. Okay, and let's assume that it takes, it does that in 15 seconds. It goes from 100 meters a second to 5,000 meters a second in 15 seconds. Tell me what the, I want you to do, do two things for me. One, I want you to determine the acceleration rate, okay? And I want you to also tell me how much distance that it travels. How much distance does it travel? Oops, too many distance. Okay, go. Shh. Guys, what kind of what kind of motion do we have? Shh. Constant acceleration, which means that what equations can we use? What equations can we use? Okay, but there are two basic equations for constant acceleration. What are two basic equations? Give it to me. Right, change of velocity over change of time, which is V final minus V initial over our delta T, right? Okay. The other equation is what? Delta distance is equal to one half A. Guys, hold on one second. A delta T squared plus V initial times my delta T. To solve for acceleration, how do I do this? Okay, I'm going to use the velocity final and velocity initial over 100. You guys get that, right? And then to find my distance, I've got to use both terms. Both terms. This is important. Do you guys see that? Because my total distance is going to be that initial velocity times my time plus the the, the acceleration rate that I determined earlier, correct? You guys get that? Good? Anyone have any problem with that? If you guys can do that, you're going to be good. Do it? Yeah. So it's going to be equal to V final, which is, what's my V final? That's going to be, um, so 5,000 meters per second minus 100 meters per second over... 15 seconds, right? So it's going to be 4,900 meters per second over 15 seconds. 4,900 divided by 15 is 327 meters per second squared. So the acceleration is 327.5. 
327 meters per second squared. Okay? 327 meters per second squared. It's 5,000 minus 100. Oops, hold on. 5,000 minus 100 divided by 15. I don't know how you got that. Did you square? Did you square root it? No, you didn't. Um, so I don't. I don't know how you gained twenty-seven. But it's, maybe, maybe you did. Maybe you did it. Five hundred minus one hundred divided by fifteen. Yeah, you did. You did five hundred minus one hundred, not five thousand. Okay. Okay. So your process is right. Your process. Okay. Okay. But now, now you have. Now you have the acceleration rate, right? So my distance is going to be the, my change of distance is going to be one half times my acceleration rate, which is 327 meters per second squared, times my delta time squared, which is 15 seconds squared, plus my initial velocity, which is what? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry. 100. That's right. you got to be careful. 100 meters per second times 15 seconds. You see that? Hey, all your stuff is coming in. All this stuff is here. Is here. Um, okay, so now it's going to be um, uh, 15 squared, okay, times 327 divided by 2, okay, plus 1500. Divided by two, because one half, right? That's fine. Plus fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. It's fifteen times a hundred. So my distance is thirty-eight thousand two hundred eighty-seven meters. So my change in distance is thirty-eight or thirty-eight thousand two hundred eighty-seven, roughly. Okay. Because you got to take into account that initial velocity. If I do do something stupid, kind of like doing 500 to 5,000. I don't count. All, I just I just make a small mark off for that, and I carry it all through. That's why the test takes forever to grade. So I, I'm just saying, like, if I do something stupid, I'm going to do 